Today we begin a new topic that talks about fear and that we want to live a fearless life. We want to be fearless. We want to be people that walk boldly and free from this spirit of fear that Paul said to his spiritual son in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. He says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but rather God has given us a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. And so this month we begin a new series on fearless life. So welcome to church this morning, wherever you are. I want to bring you greetings from New Life Church and say how privileged we are and honored to be sharing, uh, to, uh, to be sharing God's word with you wherever you are. Joshua chapter 1 is where I am going to be reading from. And so if you could turn with me to that book, Joshua chapter 1. I'm going to highlight a few verses and also share some thoughts of what I believe will lose you from fear, particularly the fear of failure, the fear of not being able to meet expectations, the fear that can hold you back the most, the fear that will stop you from doing what God has put you to do on earth. It's the kind of fear, for example, that keeps many young people away from marriage. Although many young people are in relationships and they are dating, very few of them are transitioning their girlfriends into wives or they are transitioning these relationships into marriages. And these are not just my words. There was a research done among a group of unmarried men between the age of 25 and 33. And they were asked, what are the major reasons why you are not married? And you will not be surprised to hear that most of them say they, they fear increased responsibility and fear that there will be financial loss. And uh, these are not very different from the same fears I had during my time. I also, uh, you know, avoided and resisted marriage for a long time until when I got my breakthrough at 32. But this kind of fear is dangerous because it paralyzes you, it grips you, and it mobilizes you. And God, the Lord our God, saw the same kind of fear in this man called Joshua. And so turn with me to Joshua chapter 1. We will be reading from verse 6. Joshua chapter 1, we read from verse 6. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I sought their ancestors to give them. And verse 7, he says again, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. And verse 8 says, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. And see what verse 9 says. Because it's going to say it again. God says to Joshua, have I not commanded you? Joshua, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Isn't that just a great verse? That the Lord our God will be with us wherever we will go? And verse, then we'll now move to verse 17 and 18. 17 and 18 of chapter 1. Just as we fully obeyed Moses, so we will obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Verse 18, whoever rebels against your word and does not obey it, whatever you may command them will be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. And so... That's where we're going to be picking our learnings today from. Now, after wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, 
of Israel are in transition into the promised land. And postured like never before, they have to do this final push into Canaan. Moses, their long-standing leader, had died. And now Joshua, the new leader, has this responsibility of, of commanding the final push towards Canaan. But remember, Canaan is not free. Canaan is still occupied by what the spies described giants and big men called the Canaanites. And so as you can imagine with me what's going on in the mind of Joshua, who must accomplish this very important task. So this is a very crucial moment for Joshua. It's a make or break moment. It's a moment that Joshua and the two million Israelites have uh, to take. And so it's either now or never. But besides the imagination of a dream come true, Joshua is under so much tension and so much pressure is building within himself, but also pressure coming from outside. And, and the people that he's supposed to be leading, looking at him and saying, will this man actually lead us to the promised land? And so Joshua is second guessing himself. Joshua is growing timid moment by moment. And Joshua is beginning to shake. And God sees Joshua's deepest fear. The fear of failure. There a transition was unleashed against Joshua, a real enemy that is called in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, the spirit of fear. And today, I believe I'm speaking to many Joshuas today, people who are in transitions, people who are on the brink of major breakthroughs or some great things that God is about to do in their lives. Some, some people are transitioning from singlehood into marriage. Transitioning from being, uh, from having no children to having children. Transitioning from secondary school life into university. Transitioning from unemployment to employment. Transitioning from generational poverty to abundance. Transitioning from a one man or small size organization to a mid size or large organization. There are so many of you who are in transitions. And God is speaking to you like he spoke to Joshua. Do not fear. Be strong and courageous. And just like you, just like Joshua, there are so many of you in transitions, but who are shaking and shivering. And even the ones that seem strong or accomplished and they have arrived at their destinations, I'm afraid some of you, that's not where God wants you to be. You are here and God wants you to be there. But the reason you are stalled and stuck where you are is because of fear. Some of you are fearful of success. Some of you are fearful of the next big bold step in your lives. And God is saying to you, don't fear. Be bold. Go to your next destination. God says to Joshua, Four times in the same chapter, the same things over and over. Be strong and courageous. Be strong, Joshua, and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. In other words, God is saying, if you are going to fulfill the purposes and call on your, upon your life, then it's contingent upon you confronting the spirit of fear with courage. Fear seeks to paralyze you. Fear seeks to stop you from your destiny. But every time God says, fear not, he couples that with the most and greatest promise in the scriptures, which says, and I, for I am with you always. And so the key to conquering fear is to be bold and to be bold and courageous and to have a courageous spirit that says I can do what God says I can do and no man no evil no harm or no circumstance in life can stop me from achieving my God ordained destiny and so God said to Joshua four times 
the same words, but for four different reasons. The first time he said to Joshua in verse 6, listen to what he says, and I know we read it, but I want to just start again from verse 6. He says, fear not for the people's sake. Listen, God said to Joshua, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. And so fear not for people's sake. Please understand that when God calls you to do a particular thing, there are so many people that are connected to that thing. When God gives you a vision, when God gives you a dream, when God gives you a ministry, there are so many people connected to that dream. And so when you overcome the fear and begin to do that, there are so many people that will benefit from it. There are lots of people connected to you, what you are doing. And any moment you stop doing it, those people go down with you as well. And so, as you can see, it's not just Joshua going into the promised land. He has two million Israelites that he has to take to the promised land. But it all depends on this one man, Joshua. If he can be strong and courageous as the Lord invites him to be, then he will be able to move the two million people into the promised land. Listen, even you, whatever you are doing, there are people connected to it. It could be your family. It could be your friends. It could be your neighbors. It could be church members. It could be the community. It could be this entire nation. That if you get into what you're supposed to be doing, the entire nation will actually get into it as well. And so be bold and be fearless. For people's sake, do not fear. For your children's sake, do not fear. For your spouse's sake, do not fear. For those around you, do not fear. Do not fear because if fear dominates you, those people are either going to go down with you or going to go up with you. Do not fear. Your God-ordained purpose will not only help you, but others too. So fear not for the sake of helping others. And God says, do not fear for the sake of others. Think about those people who depend on you. It could be you, the husband. If you, st if you give up work because there is someone who doesn't like you at work, and you become weak and timid, and timid and give up your work, there are so many people at home who will not have supper and dinner because of your timid spirit. And the second time God says it, he says in verse, verse 7, he says, be strong and courageous that you may be successful wherever you go. God is telling Joshua, fear not for your own sake. Fear not, Joshua, for your own sake. You see, God doesn't just want to use you to bless others. He wants to bless you too. And that's why he says, for I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. But God says, you've got to believe this enough for you to overcome fear. And start that project. And start on your journey, on that PhD journey you, that you want to start. You've got to believe this enough that God wants to bless you to start on that master's course, to start to go into college, to actually take that opportunity for you to get into that relationship, for you to actually marry that man. You've got to believe that God wants you to succeed and prosper. And God wants to raise you up and let you do things bigger than you ever think and imagine. Joshua, God has invested so much in you. God put you under Moses. He let you go through the wilderness for 40 years. You walk through that place. God trained you through Moses. He mentored you. God has let you experience things in life. God has a lot invested in you. It is your time, Joshua. You cannot be paralyzed with the spirit of fear at transition. 
And to all of you, Joshua, wherever you are, listen to me. God has invested a lot in you. See, God has given you life. He has given you talents. He has given you skills. He has let you experience things no one has experienced. He has given you unique experiences. God has given you friends. He has given you connections. He has given you a network of people around you. God has given you access to special doors. God has given you access to special resources. God has not brought you this far so that you might fail. God wants you to prosper. Our God is a finisher. Listen, the, word, the three words of our Savior on the cross said, it is finished. The Apostle Paul also said, I have fought a good fight and finished my course. Will you finish yours? Will you finish yours? Will you overcome the spirit of fear and confront it with courage so that you might finish well your God-given destiny? Philippians chapter 1. Verse 6 says, being confident, confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. God started something in you and is not going to let you fail as long as you have conquered the spirit of fear with the spirit of courage. Everything that you've been through, every experience that you have had has been prepared for you especially to help others, but also that God may use those experiences to bless you. And the third reason why you need to be courageous is found in verse 9. See, this is what God said to Joshua. He says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. So the third time he's saying to Joshua the same thing. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. He is saying to Joshua, it's not just your name that is on the line, Joshua. My name too is on the line. My reputation goes with you. Whenever you step and do what I have told you to do, my reputation goes with you. Can you imagine you and me carry God's reputation if we are doing what he has told us to do? If we are courageous and bold enough and have stepped out to do what God wants us to do. In the book of 2 Samuel chapter 23, the Bible talks about David having three mighty men. And these mighty men did amazing feats. They did amaz amazing feats because some of the things they accomplished are very unique. There's a man, the first one of the three mighty men is a man named Adino. Oh, Adino. So the Bible says that this man with his sword, he slew 800 men, 800 Philistines that were coming towards him in one moment, single-handedly. What Elijah did is that he uh, uh, what, what he did, the, the, this is what the, the Bible talks about him doing that he, he got hold of a sword in his hand and he started fighting the Philistines and he cleaved uh, his hand on the sword until it was so attached that you could not easily remove it they had to, to bring a, uh, tools to actually remove his fingers that had cleaved on the sword and the final man, the third man, is called Shama. And Shama, the Bible says, he stood in a garden or in a field of peace and began to defend this, God, this field of peace single-handedly. Now, if you got this microphone and went and asked any one of those men and said, Adino, why did you fight 800 men all single-handedly and kill them this much? He would turn to you and say, because... My king's honor is at stake. Because my king put me here. My king's honor is at stake. And so, if you claim that God is leading you, don't let your fear of failure come in the way of his glory. 
Are you able to fight all the fears? Are you able to fight off all the enemies? Are you able to fight off all the people attacking you from achieving or getting to your God-ordained destiny? Fear will stop you from going there. But what will, but what will get you into your final destiny is courage and becoming fearless and living a fearless life. So fear not for the people's sake. Fear not for your own sake. And fear not for the king's sake. And then lastly, he said, fear not for the enemy's sake. Fear not for the enemy's sake. Notice what he said, that you will have rebels who will come against you. But only be strong and courageous. The last time God told Joshua to be strong and courageous, it's connected to enemies. In other words, what God is saying, don't be afraid. Fear not for your enemy's sake. I am going to let, I'm not going to let you fail because you have so many people that hate you. That's what God is saying to us. You have many haters, but I'm going to bless you. And that's why uh, David writes in the book of, of Psalm 23 and says that you prepare a table for me before my enemies. And God wants to prepare a table for you before your enemies. Do not fear. In fact, in the same book of, of, of 2 Samuel where, we, where I referred before, one time the Bible says uh, King David was actually was, was, was walking with his entourage. And as he moved, there was a guy that came from the house of Saul. And he began to hurl insults on him and cursing King David and throwing stones and rocks at King David. And you can imagine someone who, who, who if, if the, the president's convoy came and, and there's a guy who is coming out on the street and throwing stones and cursing the president and saying all kinds of things, what do you think will happen to that guy? He will be taken out of action pretty soon. And so one of David's mighty men said to him, Sir, will you let me hit him one time? I won't have to do it again. Can I? And King David said to him something very shocking or strange and said, No, don't hit him. Let him continue to curse me. And maybe if God will hear him cursing me, he'll put a blessing on me because he cast me. So fear not your enemies for your enemies' sake. Sometimes God will bless you because so many people are against you. And so many people are telling you you can't make it. Many people are telling you you are nobody. Many people are telling you there is no way you'll be able to achieve that dream. But I can assure you that God can take nobodies and raise them and cause them to eat in the presence of their haters. Hallelujah. God will take you and cause you to sit and eat on a high table in the presence of your enemies. If you are going to do what God has called you to do, you must break free from the paralyzing spirit of fear. Be courageous. Take courage, my brother. Take courage, my sister. I do not know what you are going through right now. I do not know at what point of transition you, you have, you are. I don't know what transitions you are going through now. But whatever it is, if you truly believe that's what God wants you to do, be courageous. Take up that courage and make the next move. Stop whining. Stop crying. Stop thinking about your enemy. God wants you to make the next step and move forward. Joshua listened to what God said to him. And as we conclude, I'm not saying that fear does not exist or fear is not real. Fear is real and it exists. When we all have fears, sometimes we fear. God created fear. It's, it's there. But God does not want us fear, does not want us to be overrun by fear. If you have Jesus, you can confidently confront fear today and now with courage. 
Without Jesus, it's impossible for you to confront fear and be free from it. When Joshua took the courage and accepted that God is with him, after chapter 1, the remaining 23 chapters, is Joshua and the children of Israel living out the promises of God and making it a reality for his people, for himself, for God, and for his enemies. And so I want to encourage you, if you have never received and accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to pause and pray for you. Because on your own, you might not be able to overcome fear. You see, even for Joshua, it took God himself to say to Joshua, Joshua, fear not. God did not send angels. God did not let anyone else speak to Joshua. He himself came straight forward and said, Joshua, do not fear because the task ahead of you is so crucial and important. And some of you, the tasks God has given you this month and next month and next year are so crucial that if you do not dress up with a spirit of courage and a spirit of bravery like Joshua did, your family might be at stake. Your whole tribe might be at stake. Your whole nation might be at stake. Your community might be at stake. Your church might be at stake. And so the first step for you to receive this courage and be dressed with the courage and boldness of God is to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. And so I'm going to pray for you. Lord Jesus, I pray that you will come into my life today. Take over. May I receive your spirit today, Lord, that I might become bold and stronger and live out the purposes for which you called me. I receive you today and receive your saving grace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May God bless you.